राइट वेलकम टू द सेकंड पार्ट ऑफ साइंस चैप्टर वन क्रॉप प्रोडक्शन एंड मैनेजमेंट इफ यू हैव नॉट गॉन थ्रू द फर्स्ट पार्ट आई वुड स्ट्रांगली अर्ज यू टू डू इट लेट्स डाइव राइट इन टू इट वट हैव वी कवर्ड सो फार प्रिपरेशन ऑफ द सॉइल एज एन एग्रीकल्चरल प्रैक्टिस and we have talked about sowing now moving further comes the next step the seed is in the soil now we need to add the nutrients now as i had previously mentioned there are two nutrients that we are bothered about i mean two class of nutrients one is organic and the other is inorganic what is the farmer going to do the farmer is going to use manure what is manure manure is composed of decaying plant elements and animal elements okay Pla animal and plant waste if you were to say you might have had heard about compost which is essentially made in the farms or it could be made in dedicated areas wherein there is a ditch and in that ditch it's basically a, a hollow land if you were to say or a puddle in which the waste are going to be put in it's going to be covered natural process of decomposition happens by microbes what we get is a microbe rich organic nutrient rich manure which is used to replace the nutrients that have been taken from the soil from the plants grown previously you can imagine land being like a bank from which you can't keep on taking money out without putting something in okay so each time the plant grows it takes some money out as a farmer coming up with the next cultivation you will have to replace that regarding the inorganic nutrients this manure is poor in inorganic nutrients the main ones that we are talking about is nitrogen phosphorus potassium sulfur okay there are natural ways in which nitrogen is added in the soil we have previously discussed about rhizobium which is a microbe that lives in the roots of legumes and naturally fixes the atmospheric nitrogen into the soil for the plants to use the other mechanism is by lightning when the lightning happens nitrogen in the atmosphere combines with oxygen and with the rain it's going to come down into the soil but all these are not going to really replace the nutrients that adequately as we would want them to and want them to have so externally the farmer is going to use what we call fertilizer now fertilizer are is made in a factory it's a chemical product both manure and fertilizer are important to improve the fertility of the soil now improved fertility of the soil will ensure that you get a good yield you need more uh, you can say yield per hectare of the land which is being cultivated now these come with obviously pros and cons when you are using a fertilizer which is a chemical part you can actually increase the output from the field to a limit to a plateau so initially what would happen is that the yield will increase and after that it will start to decrease now this is like counterintuitive isn't it because you are adding a nutrient and then you are saying that the fertility is going down why does it happen it happens because these chemicals are acidic in nature after a limit they start changing the acid levels in the soil also because they are artificial elements 
they can affect the growth of microbes and various insects like earthworms etc in the soil they were natural mechanisms by which these nutrients were coming into the system so as they go down the fertility of the soil will change also another third point which is important is that these are artificial chemicals which do not resemble the actual soil texture so they are just greens that are you know sand greens kind of thing which is available in in sacks and it's thrown around in the field it does not do any good to the soil composition except for adding that one particular nutrient in a higher percentage now if the soil texture is going to get affected it would affect the water holding capacity of the soil it would become loose like sand and clay and with the rain it is going to be easily leached away so the top soil leaching is a big problem if the soil texture is not good how do you get the good soil texture by ensuring that we are using the manure which is essentially composed of decaying leaves plant shoots as well as animal waste so hence we have to risk balance between these two okay ideally both should be used in composite uh, in in uh, combination so we have talked about the manures and the fertilizers the book very extensively actually elaborates the differences between the fertilizer and manure and i'll just go through with them uh, uh, from uh, from the book fertilizers are inorganic we have talked about it produced in factories and uh, they do not add any humus to the soil humus is decaying plant product only manure com is composition of plant product that is humus plus the animal waste as well fertilizers are very rich in particular nutrients that are going to be nitrogen phosphorus potassium and sulfur manure is obviously an organic product it can be made by the humans and uh, it is relatively less rich in these inorganic components the advantages are that it increases the water holding capacity makes the soil more porous more easy gas exchange happens because of which the roots can breathe much more better and it is friendly to the other organisms growing in the soil which anyways improve the soil fertility that is going to be microbes and insects and it also improves the soil texture okay now just going through the yield part we have already talked about that now the book also mentions about crop rotation crop rotation was essentially once you have grown a particular plant say you have had the wheat cultivation after that rotate it and do not grow another cereal again instead of that grow something which is a natural nitrogen fixer which is going to be the legume because it houses the rhizobium increases naturally the nitrogen capacity of the uh, soil now that the soil has become enriched you have also got a cash rich product which is the legumes harvest that and then go rotating between the legume and the main cereal plant so we have talked about that good we come to the next section which is going to be about irrigation so we have the soil we have the seed we have added nutrients for the seed to grow now we need to give it water so let's talk about that in india the farming is still a gamble of rains it's one of the most important sentences perhaps that you need to know and because it is still a gamble of rains it makes it very very important that we ensure that the irrigation or the watering of the plant products happens so that we can ensure there is a good harvest what are the means of adding water to the soil obviously the most natural one is going to be the rainfall 
but there has to be an artificial way in which we can grow these plants in drier arid conditions as well or when the rainfall is not there obvious source of this is going to be the rivers from the river we can get the canals there are dams built on the river to control the flow of water then there could be artificial ponds made in the fields local lakes would be another area from where the water could be obtained ground water is going to be another major source the initial ones that i talked about are all surface water ground water from tube wells wells is going to be another source there is a very interesting article about how the crop cultivation of rice has actually led to decline in the uh, water table and how it has actually affected the climate so i would really encourage you to read that google it um, which talks more about the subcontinental growth of rice as a cash crop and how we have played around the environmental effects of it by decline by using just the ground water and hence having a more lowered water table than what should have had been right so for a seed to grow what is actually required so a seed is going to have you can say a small baby plant which is the embryo okay and it is surrounded by food that is stored in the seed till the the embryo matures and it is surrounded by a seed coat which is a pretty hard coat that is present it needs proper weather conditions it needs oxygen and it needs water weather condition we have already talked about that we choose the plant depending on what's the best suitable climate conditions hence the rabi and the kharif crop concept came in you're not going to grow wheat in hot summers similarly you're not going to grow rice in january or december winters for paddy crop you need lot of water so you're not going to be growing rice in rajasthan you will be growing plants that require less water in arid areas that is going to be something like bajra and stuff like that the coarse cereals if you were to say so the weather is taken care of oxygen obviously we need oxygen for the roots to grow for the plant to grow to breathe and the other w that's for wow is the uh, you can say a mnemonic this is going to be water why do we need water essentially the seed will take in the water and hence process the food swell up break the seed coat and start growing it will come out with a shoot and it will come out with a root and this is the land okay so water plays an important part in the whole process irrigation essentially is the supply of water to the crops it has to be done at regular intervals it can't just happen that you decide one day okay fine i'm going i have put the seeds in i'll throw in five buckets of water into it i'll just fill the whole land with water and things will be sorted no you have to constantly give it it has to be a constant process at regular intervals if you were to say so you can't just stock water on the land and then say okay fine my job's done because that would not let the the seeds to grow now what are the sources and what are the methods of getting this irrigation so we have talked about the various water bodies we have talked about the ground water supply of of water but how would you actually mechanize this how would you actually mobilize this water to the field now there are various methods for it there are traditional methods and there are newer methods the newer methods are going to use machinery the traditional methods are going to use very simple instruments and they are going to use cattle plus manual labor so a very straightforward mechanism is that there is a well there is a pulley that has been set up bucket goes in 
bucket is taken out by a human or it could be pulled by the animal and this is now thrown into the this chappy is throwing the water into the field leads to a lot of wastage lot of water can drop around around the well very inefficient method now the other method that has been talked about is the chain pump method i think it's very important that you understand the diagram for this because otherwise theoretically it's very difficult to understand so what's happening is that there is another pulley system again okay this is the pulley this is a big belt on which we have got buckets that are hanging okay this is another bucket this is another bucket that's hanging now this bucket is going to this pulley is actually situated inside a water body okay so this bucket now gets filled now as it's coming out this is filled now as it's the pulley is moving obviously in this direction and this is rotating up okay so this is going in that direction this pulley is coming up now what happens is that as it reaches the tip here the bucket actually i'll remove this sorry the bucket is tilted against the land here okay so essentially you can say that it's coming 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 it hits the edge of this land cliff that has been artificially created and this water is now going to spill and now this is going to go further and this is how this water from this level area has been brought up to the land cliff that has been made here okay so this is going to be run by obviously either a machine or it has to be cattle driven so what is the chain pump method of irrigation the chain pump irrigation of method utilizes a long belt having buckets attached to it two pulleys and that's how this is happening okay now this obviously is going to be channelized into a small canal system and then it reaches the field the other method is going to be dekhli method which again is explained with the help of a diagram better it is again a pulley system in which instead of the human being making an effort to draw water from a well this is the well okay and a branch of a tree has been kept on top of it there is a long log okay and a heavy rock is tied here okay this is the rock there is a bucket attached here of course now if you were to remove the rock this will tilt down and go in go inside the well fetch the water now you put the rock back and now this is going to come up which is going to be taken by the human and uh, they will shunt it further again leads to a lot of wastage and not a very efficient method as you can obviously say the other method is going to be the rahat method which essentially involves cattle attached to a fly wheel so essentially this is water there is a wheel attached and similar to the chain method the chain pump method there are buckets attached to it so how does it work out that as the bucket goes into the water it gets full okay and now it tips automatically and it throws the water and there is a separate pipeline that is connected or a canal system created which takes the water into the field what keeps this 
flywheel moving is that it is attached either to a cattle which keeps moving it or it is a it is a motorized system okay so that's how these traditional methods of irrigation work obviously they are not efficient proper utilization of water is not happening there is a lot of wastage that we are dealing in this case so we can use pumps now the two important modern methods that you need to know about is one is the sprinkler method and one is the drip system sprinkler you might have had seen even in your schools essentially there is going to be a water source let's say that this is the water source okay this is either a pond or a lake or something from where there is a pipe connecting to a motor this motor is going to fire into various small perpendicularly erected pipes they are attached to a sprinkler okay so the sprinkler is going to rotate and give a shower or as a sprinkle of the water as it is flowing through the sprinkle is going to be similar to like a rainfall happening what it would do is it would ensure that there is uniform distribution of water without any wastage from the main source area now similarly this pipeline could be connected to another parallel pipeline and it could be connected to another parallel pipeline so that the entire field is covered the idea is that it is motor driven and there is proper utilization of water now the other system is going to be the drip system in which again there is going to be a source and a motor which is going to pump stuff into pipe system now instead of the sprinkler there would be a dripper that is attached so rather than this perpendicular pipe standing out from the ground there is just a simple drip uh, a drip method where a dribbler is going to leak water into the soil and there would not be a superficial sprinkle like a rainfall being created now can you think of why the drip method is going to be more useful and what is the distinct advantage that it offers over the sprinkler the sprinkler obviously is going to supposing i'll just make one sprinkler so if i were to say that this is the nozzle area from where the water is going to be thrown away and this is going to rotate so it ensures the 360 degree rotation this area is not really getting the water isn't it so obviously how this is going to get water is from the other sprinkler this will be its feeding area so it would feed into it but that's one part second is that it's still prone to a lot of evaporation now one very important thing that you can't do is that if Uh, uh compared to the drip method is that uh, you can't have recycled water being thrown like this by that what i mean is that in water deficient areas they are going to be using the sewage water as well for uh, giving it to the plants so you can well imagine that if a water source has been uh contaminated with human feces and animal feces and stuff you can't be throwing that like rain around so in water deficient areas where water conservation is being done by reusing and recycling water resources from sewage areas they prefer to use the drip method and it's an extremely extremely effective method because directly where the plant is growing the pipeline is going as well parallel to it and there is this drip coming through as a drop of water constantly leaking into the root of the soil 
now this could be either surface at at the level of the surface of the ground or it could either be even subsurface so the the outlet from this drip system might be actually embedded into the soil and it's directly feeding into the roots so how it helps is it prevents the evaporation part okay so water is not wasted at all now moving to the other aspect is going to be protection from weeds so we have covered now the irrigation the remaining part we will cover in the next section thank you